Framing. We will now frame up our floor and site plan areas on our sign. In the sign framing tool, using a keyboard and mouse, we can hold down our middle mouse button or scroll wheel to pan around the page, or scroll in and out to zoom in and out, holding down the control key on your keyboard for finer control. We can then do the same on the site plan, framing this just large enough to show all the site plan roads and assembly areas, and then set our floor plan to show the extents of the floor plan and as much of the evacuation path as required. If you are using a touchscreen device, you can also use your fingers to pinch and zoom and pan around that way. You can then reset to the default framing or lock the framing to avoid it changing later on. Margins. The margin tool is used in conjunction with the framing tool to help crop up large floor plans into smaller areas. By setting a margin, we can keep the edge of the floor plan from running off the side of the page. Using the rectangle option, we will set our page to have a 10mm margin on all four sides so that we will create a nice even margin around the entire floor plan area. If we now move our plan and crop off a section of it, you will see that it gets cropped off at the margin rather than the edge of the page, and this is reflected in the building footprint on the site plan. If we pan this back over now, we can then change our margin option from rectangle mode into polygon mode, which allows us to have a much finer level of control over our margins by editing the area nodes in the same way that we would with our zone nodes tool. This way, we can have better control over exactly what we want to hide or crop on each plan, but for now, we will leave this set to rectangle mode. Icon layouts. The icon layout tool gives you the ability to control and lay out the positioning of all of the icons, text and equipment on a sign. By default, Plan Studio will lay out all of the icons in a logical position to avoid any icons ever crossing paths, blocking evacuation routes or doors, and will try to obscure as little information as possible. You then have the option to fine tune the position of each icon by either clicking once on the icon to see the preset layout options or by clicking and dragging the icon to position it wherever you like. For leader line icons, it's usually best to use the preset options to keep everything nice and neat, but for the UI here, you'll usually want to manually position this. We can then also reposition our north symbol on the site plan in the same way, and adjust and rotate any text or room names on the plan. Lastly, we can also adjust our evacuation paths. You can click on the end arrow to see the preset text options, we can then drag the text to wherever you like it and move the final arrow anywhere back along the evacuation route. Once you are happy with the layout, you can then choose to lock the layout or reset it back to its default. Clone settings. Clone settings is used to copy the configuration of a sign you have already framed and apply it to another sign. This is useful for multi-story buildings that may have signs placed in the same location on each floor. Once you've laid out a sign you want to clone, you can select the floor you want to clone a sign from, and then pick the specific sign you want to copy. Leaving this in automatic will let the software pick the best sign to clone from. Changing to our second sign, we can pick our ground floor you are here one sign, and have the option to choose which elements we want to copy over. We have the option to clone the framing and margins, the layout of all the icons and objects, and any adornments we have placed. Adornments will be covered later in this tutorial. If we now press the clone button, Plan Studio will lay out our new sign as close to the original as possible, with the exception of the you are here symbol, which will be in a new position in this case anyway. Final Exits. Final Exit mode configures which evacuation paths you want to display on a site plan. By default, this will be set to automatic, which will automatically configure your site plan to show all of the relevant evacuation paths from your floor plan. All accessible paths will show every evacuation route that touches your building footprint on the site plan, and if we change to some accessible exits, we will then see that every evacuation path on the site plan is now turned on, with the option to manually configure which paths we want to display, giving the option to turn on and off each path and be very specific with which paths we want to show on each sign. Automatic is usually the best option, as by default it will reflect the floor plan's paths on the site plan, as you can see if we turn off the secondary paths temporarily. Which option you use will always depend on the building and the requirements for the current sign. Adornments. 
You also have the option to add adornments to any sign. An adornment is an object that can be placed over the top of an evacuation sign that is not necessarily relevant to a floor plan or required on every sign. When in this tool, you can use the pink plus button to add a graphic to the sign and then upload a file from your computer. I will upload the Plan Studio Academy logo and then move it to the top corner. You also have all the standard editing options. We can also add in a text box. We can then type out a quick note for this sign, edit its layout and alignment, set its size and how it grows as we add text, create a list and so on. We can also change any colors, add a background image, curve its edges with rounding and if required, pat it out to keep it from its edges. This is the best way to add any additional information to a sign that you don't want to add to the floor plan or to the template itself.